It is the morning of a still summer's day. The sun was shining brightly through the open windows, casting a warm golden glow across the room. The crisp, fresh air carried the sweet scent of freshly cut grass and wildflowers from the nearby fields. In the room, Jobal Amidala had just given birth to the baby Padme Amidala. Padme was born to one of the royal families of Naboo, and it was likely she would continue down the path for the throne. However, it was discovered early on that she was force sensitive. Her parents knew what the right thing to do was and contacted the Jedi Order for her to be trained in the ways of the Force. She lives there as a baby for years until she's old enough to become a youngling. When she began her training, she stuck out from her peers. Not only did she show a high aptitude for the Force, but had a way with words and always debated right and wrong with her classmates and prevailed. She was known by her masters as a rising student of the Force with a fearless attitude and unwavering resolve when she believed in something. Due to her exceptional conversationalism and articulation, the masters had hoped she would become a notably good Jedi that excelled in dispute resolution and could be used as a powerful diplomat. Her charisma and personable nature echoes through the Jedi Order and she stands out as a star pupil. On her 13th birthday, she was chosen by Master Plo Koon to become his Padawan learner. Plo saw Padme as an integral part in the future of the Jedi Order and took her upon himself to teach her the subtleties of the Force. One day, she's standing just inside the Jedi Temple on the second floor balcony looking into the main foyer, thinking about her lessons that day. She looks upon the temple entrance as she sees Master Qui-Gon, a teacher she's become close with during her time as a Padawan. Padme really connected with Qui-Gon and vice versa. Jin would read Amidala's stories of ancient Jedi prophecies and about the living force. However, next to the master was a boy she did not recognize. A young boy who couldn't be older than 10 with sandy blonde hair and bright blue eyes. She could sense the fear and ambition within the boy and she wanted to comfort him. They walk straight through the temple as Padme stares upon Qui-Gon's long dark hair and wonders who the boy may be. Little did she know, this would be the last time that she saw her friend, Qui-Gon. Padme's first mission as a Jedi Padawan under Plo Koon would have a long lasting impact on her for years to come. Her life as a Padawan was to be filled with many challenges, but none more so than the journey she took with her master, Plo Koon, to the distant planet of Felucia. As Padme and Plo Koon travel deeper into the jungle, they encountered a group of Felucian warriors who were engaged in a brutal war with a rival tribe. Amidala was horrified by the violence she witnessed and the suffering of the innocent Felucian women and children caught in the crossfire. She was tempted to use her own powers to stop the violence, but Plo Koon warned her that using the force for personal gain was a path towards the dark side. Padme's compassion and desire for justice was so strong it almost broke through her Jedi training. She wanted to use her powers desperately to save everyone involved, but listened to Plo's teachings and warnings. Instead, she used her diplomatic skills she was known for to help organize a peace treaty between the two tribes. Her patience, understanding and compassion for the Felucians won them over and she was able to broker a lasting peace towards the two sides. The experience on Felucia taught Padme the true power of the Force and the importance of using it wisely. She realized that Jedi was not all about combat, but also bringing peace and order to the galaxy. Padme would remember this experience. From now on, she would remain true to the Jedi Code, using her skills to bring peace and stability to the galaxy. She never forgot the lessons she learned on Felucia, and her unwavering commitment to the light side of the Force became a guiding principle in her life as a Jedi. Two years down the line, she continues to excel in her training under Plo Koon's tutelage. Koon's aptitude for specialized lightsaber combat has rubbed off onto Amidala as she becomes competent in Form 5 lightsaber technique Xi'an. He also taught Amidala his signature technique of electrical judgment, a technique similar to Sith lightning but encompasses a Jedi's desire for justice into electrical energy that can knock unconscious or even kill. Amidala has a keen desire for justice and so took to this technique perfectly. After a mission on her homeworld of Naboo, Padme came back to the Jedi Temple to recuperate and reflect on what she learnt from the mission. However, passing a youngling training class, she sees a young boy, maybe five years younger than her, being picked on by the other children. 
The boy is called names and teased. Padme can sense the tension growing and intervenes, telling off the bullies and comforts the boy who tells Padme his name is Anakin. Padme knew she recognized the boy from when he first came to the Jedi Temple with Qui-Gon years ago. Anakin had never expected anyone to stick up for him. His master Obi-Wan had never even done that. He's felt alone at the Jedi Temple since he's arrived, but Padme has shown Anakin her compassion, which touches him deep within. They walk the corridors, and she introduces herself to him and Anakin explains to her his backstory. Her compassion and friendly nature reaches Anakin and their bond is formed. Anakin has made his first friend in the Jedi Order. Padme and Anakin don't see each other very often now that Anakin has fully become Obi-Wan's apprentice. However, when they do, they always get along amazingly. They would teach each other what they learned on their respective missions. Through their trials and triumphs, they grew to understand and trust each other and their friendship deepened over time. Years go by and war is brewing. The Jedi gather in large forces and head towards Geonosis to recover Mace Windu who has been sentenced to death by Count Dooku. Weeks ago, Windu was summoned by the Kaminoans to Kamino regarding the Jedi's order for a clone army. However, there was no record of such a thing. They discovered Master Sifo Dyas had ordered the clone army for the Republic shortly before his death and Windu tracked the lead back to Geonosis where he was captured. Neither Padme or Anakin was assigned to the mission, but it was the beginning of a dark chapter in Anakin's life with the start of the Clone War. With no romantic love for Padme or anyone in his heart, the Clone War was particularly rough for Anakin. He had a tendency for violence in which he excelled at and used to resolve his problems. He disregarded the Jedi teachings on negotiation, diplomacy and considered them useless and thought of violence as the true power in the universe. Padme didn't see Anakin for a year and a half after the beginning of the Clone War, but when she did, she was shocked. She could sense the darkness within him. She could sense the impact that the constant combat and loss of life had on him. She knew the Jedi Council had given him Padawan Tano to help nullify this, but she could sense this had failed and feel Anakin's attachment to her through the Force. She tried to talk to Anakin about this, but he moved on to another mission too quickly before she could get the chance. Padme saw Anakin a few more times the next year and became increasingly aware of the darkness growing within him. Despite his brave and selflessness actions on the battlefield, she could sense a change within Anakin's demeanor as he became more distant, angry and prone to fits of rage. She recognized the toll the war was having on him. Padme was particularly attuned to the force as she could sense the pull of the dark side within him. She tried to support and offer comfort, but Anakin grew increasingly resistant to her efforts as he started to break away from their friendship. As his anger and frustration grew, so did his dependence on the dark side of the Force. Padme and Anakin were assigned to the same mission just after Padme was promoted to Jedi Knight. Padme saw this as an opportunity to save her longtime friend who was obviously lost and slipping down the dark path. Their mission took them to Wayland, a mid-rim planet. The Jedi were called in by the local natives who revealed a warlord had been taking power and controlling the people by forcing them to work by building infrastructure and farming. Anakin and Padme go to investigate the action further and witness the warlord forcing people to work. Padme knows Anakin's past of slavery and knew this would upset him. She could sense the anger building. Anakin proclaims there and then that he will kill the warlord to end the conflict. He rushes over, ignites his blade and jumps towards the warlord, ready to strike. Padme pulls Anakin back with the force and tells him that there is another way. However, the warlord and henchmen have their guns out ready to fire. They shoot at Padme, who effortlessly dodges without using her lightsaber and hits the warlord and henchmen with electric judgment, rendering them unconscious. When they woke, Padme began displaying her skills. She managed to convince Anakin to stand down and let her try first. After a long discussion with the warlord, his true intentions were revealed. He wasn't actually a warlord, but just a man who cared deeply about his people and was scared for their survival. He wanted them to build up their towns, to plow more food and ensure everyone has a warm place to sleep and enough food to eat. However, from the view of the people, he was acting as a dictator with no authority and it's not a stretch for the people to assume he's doing it for personal gain. Padme comes to a solution. The towns will each vote for a representative 
and the representatives from each town will meet once a week to discuss the planning for the future and other necessary tasks. Together, Padme, Anakin and the Warlord travel around each town and propose these terms. They are graciously accepted. Peace and justice has once again been served. This whole time, Anakin watches Padme's actions in amazement. There was no way he thought she could succeed. But she did, and her actions without a lightsaber have caused the entire population to benefit. He couldn't believe she could resolve conflict with her words alone. Anakin begins to understand the true purpose of the Jedi teachings and begin to realize the Force is not all about violence. Conflicts can be resolved without a lightsaber. Padme looks upon Anakin's face and can sense substantial change within him. She decides to entrench this change within him by taking him to Felucia, the site of her first mission. They talk about Padme's first mission whilst walking through the jungle that was once a battlefield, turned city where life and families flourish alike. Padme tells Anakin what she learned that day, that the Force is not all about violence, but honesty, compassion and selflessness. Using these qualities, disputes can be resolved without a lightsaber. This was the first time Padme had returned to Felucia since that day, and the city was flourishing more than she could have imagined. This mission with Padme has been an epiphany for Anakin. Padme's views of the light side of the Force have rubbed off onto Anakin. They come back to the Jedi Temple and report their victory to the Council. Everyone there notes they sense a change within Anakin. His prior rage and fear has begun to diminish, and he's slowly moving back towards the light. However, Padme's actions has undermined one person, Sheev Palpatine. Palpatine was delighted at the progress Anakin was making during the Clone War and couldn't believe it for himself. This whole time, Palpatine had been placing the seeds of doubt, fear and frustration in Anakin about the Clone War, the Jedi Order and the ones he loved. He was close to the dark side and was about to reveal himself. However, the next time he met Anakin, something had changed. He senses the light side once again in Anakin and the darkness beginning to dim. He decides it's time to lay on his manipulation even more before it's too late and the light starts to grow again. He begins by playing on Anakin's fear, the fear of losing his loved ones and the fear of not having enough power to save them. He pushes on Anakin's frustration with the Jedi Order, suggesting he deserves better and can break past their limitations. He knows Anakin has a deep ambition for power and finally concludes that he can give him all he's ever wanted if he joins him in the dark side of the Force. Anakin's what eyes grow wide as he rushes in front of his mentor, igniting his lightsaber. You're the Sith Lord. He proclaims as he stares in disbelief. He thinks about all the times Palpatine's supposedly been there for him, but it's all been a lie. At this moment, Palpatine stops concealing his presence within the Force, and Anakin feels this like a tsunami. Palpatine stinks of the dark side. Anakin knows he doesn't stand a chance if they duel right now, and knows he must get out of there. He tells his friend he will think about it and begins to walk away. Palpatine still senses a flicker of the dark side within him as he exits and leaves him with the lasting words. Yes, Anakin, together we shall bring order to the galaxy. Anakin storms towards the Jedi Temple but notices Mace Windu out at the hangar. Mace is with Plo Koon, Padme, Kit Fisto and Shark T. Anakin tells Windu that Palpatine is a Sith Lord. Mace asks Anakin if he's sure, and tells him Palpatine stunk of the dark side. Mace gathers who's there, and they go to confront Palpatine. Anakin tells Mace that he'll need his help. He stares deeply within Anakin, and understands he's turned a new leaf. The rage and hatred he once sensed is gone, and is allowed to join them. Anakin walks in first. Palpatine turns around to his voice, and goes to welcome him in, when he sees the five Jedi behind him. Palpatine panics and calls it's for treason, treason, but Mace tells him they know the truth. Sidious uses the force to summon two red blades across the room and screams as he jumps towards the Jedi. With his incredible speed, he cuts down Kit Fisto, momentarily turns into a blur, then impales Shark T. He goes to decapitate Anakin, but Windu blocks the strike and spins him around. They were all shocked by Palpatine's speed and aggression, but as a group, they managed to keep up. Windu's vapor is having its effect and he's gaining strength as the fight increases. Palpatine ducks Padme's strike and spins off blows, but inadvertently turns towards Windu's lightsaber. He uses his speed to try and escape, but his blade slices across his chest. The wound isn't deep, but it'll slow him down. Anakin's previous rage has turned into unwavering mental clarity and strength. 
No emotion is driving his strength in this battle. He feels no hate, no anger, and no fear towards Palpatine. He is only the Force. Anakin overcomes Palpatine's defenses and disarms his left hand. Palpatine pushes Padme's incoming attack away with the Force and goes to jump at her, but Anakin pulls Palpatine close with the Force and impales his chest with his blade, ending the Sith Lord. After the defeat of Palpatine, the Jedi Order and Republic slowly begin to rebuild. With the Sith finally defeated, the Jedi were able to focus on restoring peace and order to the galaxy. Anakin and Padme play pivotal roles in the Sith defeat and take the lead role in the Jedi Order, with them both receiving seats on the Jedi Council. The Republic too slowly began to rebuild, after surrender negotiations were accepted from the Separatists. Under the newly elected Supreme Chancellor Mothma, the Republic implemented reforms aimed at restoring peace and stability to the galaxy. Economic, political and social reforms were put in place to help those who had suffered during the Clone War. In the years following, the Jedi Order and Republic worked together to maintain peace in the Republic. New Jedi academies and training facilities were established around the galaxy to train new generations of Jedi and uphold the ideals of the Order and Republic. The Jedi Order and Republic both prospered, and their influence grew as they became symbols of peace, justice and hope throughout the galaxy. Jedi Master Padme Amidala is the driver of many of these improvements, and is ultimately seen as the star and future of the Jedi Order. She is the embodiment of the light side of the Force, and perfectly represents all Jedi ideals. Because of this, following Yoda's death, Padme is promoted to Grand Master and is the future of the Jedi Order. Anakin owes Padme everything for pulling him back from the dark path he was already so far down. In this story, Padme doesn't save Anakin as a lover, but as a dear friend. If you enjoyed this video, you have to watch what if Padme Amidala was a Sith Lord, or what if Anakin Skywalker never killed Count Dooku. Please consider becoming a member or check out our Patreon, where all proceeds go into making videos for you guys. This has been a highly requested video, so I would love to know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you next time.